It's the 9th of June, 68 AD, and this is the end for me. I have been named an enemy of the people and have been sentenced to death by beating. But I will be the one to determine my own fate, for I am Nero, the Emperor of Rome, singer, performer, musician, and chariot racer. What an artist dies in me. I was once heralded as a generous emperor, bringing about the kind of golden age. Taxes were lowered and the arts were celebrated everywhere. I performed in plays, sang in concerts, and played instruments to my loyal followers. There are even stories that people tell of me playing my lyre while Rome burned in 64 AD. But I will let you judge whether you or not you think I would do such a thing. I even postponed the Olympics in Greece by a year so I could train and race chariots there. However, it seems that good things never last. I am unsure about how I got to this point, on the verge of suicide and being called a tyrant and enemy of the people. I am the last in line of the Julio-Claudian dynasty, but I was not always called Nero. I was born Lucius Domitus Ahenobarbus in 37 AD, the son of Gnaeus Domitus Ahenobarbarius and Agrippina the Younger. My father died when I was very young, and my mother remarried, this time her uncle, Emperor Claudius. My mother was a very persuasive woman when she wanted to be, as Claudius adopted me and named me his successor, instead of his own son, Britannicus. I was later wed to Octavia, Claudius's daughter, which only strengthened my claim to the empire. My mother was, of course, thrilled about this. My mother is now dead. In fact, I gave the order for my mother's murder. Such an act is usually frowned upon in Rome, but the murder was actually better received than I had expected. I was left with no other option, you see. It all happened like this. I had been named Emperor of Rome in 54 AD, but I was only 17, and I still wanted to explore my interests. This is when I came up with the genius solution of leaving my two trusted advisors, Burrus and Seneca, and my mother in charge of affairs while I indulged in my passions. The people were happy, and the Senate shared power with me. They had a range of entertainment options to choose from, games, plays, tournaments, and they had an emperor blessed with creativity. The time came, though, when I decided to take more responsibility, which Seneca definitely agreed with. However, my mother was not as keen on this idea. She took this so badly, in fact, that she started to push Britannicus' claim to the throne. Britannicus was younger than me and was reaching the birthday that would mark him as an adult an age at which he would be able to make a legitimate claim to the empire. Let's just say that her plan failed as Britannicus died suspiciously the day before he could reach that birthday. I banished my mother, but this really did not make much difference. My mother had always looked upon my personal relationships disapprovingly. I did not want to be shackled to my wife Octavia any longer, as she was not providing me with an heir which made her useless. I started to look elsewhere which infuriated my mother. She insisted that I could not divorce Octavia, as it would turn the people against me, and also refused to accept the other woman I chose instead. I was fed up with my mother's interfering and deceiving nature, and despite her meddling, I fell in love with a noblewoman, Popea Sabina. I had reached my limit. In 59 AD, I began to hear whispers that my mother was plotting to kill me. So I decided to kill her first. I asked my men to sink her boat, but that mission failed. So I stopped with the elaborate schemes and sent them to kill her in her home. I mean, anyone would have done the same in my position. Seneca, one of my closest advisors, assured me that I had made the right decision. Without my mother's interference, I then started to take action and make my own decisions. I started with divorcing my wife Octavia. I later had her executed on the grounds of adultery. Some were very critical of this, saying that I had fabricated the whole thing. But I do know one thing. That was highly convenient, as it meant I could live at long last with my true love, Popea Sabina, who was already pregnant with my daughter. In January 63 AD, my daughter was born. Finally, I had an heir to my dynasty. But this happiness did not last long as my daughter died only a few months later. I was distraught, and I think this was a turning point for me. I became filled with anger and rage. The following year, in July of 64 AD, Rome burnt in the Great Fire, which devastated the city and the people within it. 
I was quick to organize a relief effort to help rebuild the city, but as the center was already burned down, I decided that it was a great opportunity to do something new and wonderful that all the people of Rome could appreciate. So I ordered a grand gold palace built, which would also contain a huge statue of myself. Considering I gave so much back to Rome, I thought it was only fair to give something back to myself. And what is better than having a grand statue of yourself to admire? However, despite my relief efforts, I was still receiving a lot of criticism. I don't think the people of Rome liked the increase in taxes, but what else was I meant to do? People even went as far as to spread the rumors saying that I caused the fire and played my lyre and sang in the palace while the city burned. I will let you believe whomever you want. I knew that it was more likely to be the actions of the agitating Christians. I knew there was merit to these rumors and that I must act. I encouraged the persecution of Christians throughout Rome, nailing them to crosses and setting them afire at night to illuminate the great city. Someone had to pay. Even with someone to blame for the fire, people still began to turn against me. I suspected that at parties people were saying things behind my back and my own political supporters were growing thin. I tried everything to gain back the people's support. I even gave public performances where I performed plays and sang. I made sure that everyone enjoyed these special performances and that no one was allowed to leave, even if it meant they died while watching. These performances, though, were simply not appreciated. I had to ensure that my position of power remained intact, so I did what anyone else would do in my shoes. I eliminated my opposition by having anyone that opposed me or said anything bad about me executed. Some may think that is harsh, but I did not want to take any chances. I found out about the conspiracy to murder me in 65 AD by some of the Roman officials, so I quickly had them all executed. As you can imagine, I was feeling very anxious at this time, and I experienced a lot of rage. But so would anyone in my position. Unfortunately, sometimes even my wife Popea got in the way. Like the time when she angered me and I was forced to kick her in the stomach. She had been pregnant and died soon after. But I don't think it was me that killed her. It was just an unfortunate thing. After the death of Pompeia, things turned really dark for me. Revolts were taking place all over the empire, land had been lost, and wars had cost Rome a lot of money. In 68 AD, the current year, I returned home from an extended trip to Greece. Oh, how I love Greece with its Olympic Games. You know they even started to include artistic challenges just for me? Anyway, I returned home to find the Roman governor Gaius Lilius Vindex of Gaul revolting against my throne. I did not think much of this revolt at the time, and so decided to just ignore it, like so many before. But this turned out to be the end of me. What I did not know was that the governor Galba, who was supported by Governor Gaius, was gaining support within Rome, and the Senate were slowly turning against me in support of him. It was when the Praetorian Guard, whose job it is to protect the Emperor, turned against me and renounced me as their Emperor that I started to worry. I knew that I had to get out. The Senate named me an enemy of the people, and I fled Rome as quickly as I could. I have since heard that I am to be arrested and beaten to death. Me, the great Emperor, talented artistic athlete and musician, Nero Claudius Caesar Augustus Germanicus. I cannot believe that it has come to this. Oh, what an artist dies in me.